Hello, welcome to a GibbsCam demonstration from Midwest Cam Solutions. This demonstration is for volume mill for a GibbsCam. Basically, uh, this is a solid model part that is for a stamping die. And every part we machine, there's generally a place to apply a volume mill toolpath. Volume mill is for roughing, uh, reducing uh, cutting time dramatically. Um, anywhere from 40 to 200 percent. It can be anywhere within those ranges of savings of cut time. Um, operation 2 here, I'll double click it and load the volume mill toolpath over. This is what a volume mill toolpath looks like. It's kind of these swirling type looks. And uh, the volume mill uh, tiles on a machining pellet called volume mill pocketing. We're using a uh, half inch diameter end mill the speeds and feeds we're running volume mill is the max RPM of the machine. This machine has 10,000 RPM, 200 inches per minute feed rate, uh, the depth of cut, uh, the cut width. Now the differences between volume mill and standard machining is we generally take one cut, not little steps. Um, if I was going to go an inch deep with this half inch end mill, I'd reduce my cut width to about 30 thousandths. But basically, uh, the parameters we use can be applied to any part, any shape. Once you uh, get them all tuned up, you can save the process and reuse them again. It has a high feed rate that it'll use for the repositioning. So when it retracts up from the floor with the minimal uh, 10 thousandths little floor clearance, it'll helix on, helix off, and use a high feed for that repositioning uh, feed rate. And this is roughing and leaving a little stock for it. It'll never make a sharp corner always smooth round radius turns and lifting the tool up uh, and if you can see it here in the side view where it lifts it up let's turn the CPR on once and let this render and uh, rewind it I'll slow it down let it play so the tool comes in and starts making these little swirling type tool pads if you look at the bottom of the tool it's actually lifting up tenth all helix is back down and cuts again Minimizing the retracts, keeping the tool tight to the part, and using a high feed rate. If wrapper traverse is faster than high feed, it'll use that. So it makes its own decision based on cycle time. Now, these two little uh, cutouts here that we're using the volume mill on are for these two little, um, uh, we extract a geometry and we have what we call air walls. We right click, we make the geometry from wall to air. Then it knows that that is an open sided feature. The tool will land outside and clean that up. Now this volume mill toolpath, operation two here, the operation summary uh, gives us a cut time report and it takes 20 seconds to mill both those corners out. Now I have for an example for you to compare, I have an operation 10 down here, 10-11, these two tiles are roughing it out based on the old style. Well the old style we ran at 2500 RPMs, we're feeding at 25 inches a minute, and we're taking eighth inch axial steps. Uh, in Z uh, for little passes. And the runtime difference on these two, let's go look at these and compare them. We have 20 seconds versus if you add these two together, 24 and 24 would be 48. So we have 20 seconds versus 48 seconds. That's a 58% savings in cut time. The larger the area is, the more savings you'll have. If I look at the front area here that all the stock that needs to get roughed out, Operation 3 here is doing that. And you'll notice that here it's using high feeds. When it gets here where it's a longer stretch, it rapids because rapid is faster than feeding. And it knows the uh, to, to toggle this on its own. We are multiple processing this with a Gibbs pocketing that's just going to finish the sidewalls in the floor and just take a little 10 thousandths off, off the bottom. Now the volume mill toolpath on this process is exactly the same as the previous. Same depth, 200 inches a minute, 10,000 RPMs, and away we go. So when you say redo it, it'll recalculate the volume mill toolpath and apply it. And you can combine them with Gibbs Cam processes as well. So you can multiple process with these strategies. Now if we go look at the runtime report on, on this toolpath that we just did, which is operation three, operation three is 54 seconds and the cut time 
without volume mill is 4 minutes and 44 seconds. Well now we have roughly an 80% savings in cut time. The more the area, the more savings. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a good thing. And some of the big benefits is not only the savings of the cutting time, but the tool life. Because we're not just wearing out the tip of the tool anymore. We're engaging the full flute length of this cutter and taking a deeper cut uh, at a faster pace, but a smaller side cut. And when the volume mill toolpath is generating the toolpath, it adapts feeds that are different for every turn. So inside corners speed up, outside uh, arcs would, would uh, speed up, and insides would actually slow down. When you hear it cutting, you'll hear the exact same pitch, the exact same harmonic tone, the whole engagement of the cutter. Uh, tools last longer, your setups don't have to be as rigid because you're not having as much side pressure on your part anymore. Uh, so the volume mill toolpath is definitely a, a place uh, to shave off uh, cut time and increase your profits by maximizing your tool life, your cutting time, and the load that you put on that spindle. It is definitely a, a great thing is this volume mill uh, technology. Other than that, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this quick little presentation of volume mill. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.